Welcome to the Ambitious Broker Podcast, where elite real estate professionals share their secrets to success, discuss topics impacting their industry, and gain professional development insights. Enjoy today's episode. Hey, everybody, welcome back to our icon series here at Ambitious Broker. Today, we're covering the legendary Stephanie Vitaco in the first of a three part series. Stephanie has set the standard for San Fernando Valley real estate. Her years of experience and genuine passion for the business has enabled her to achieve a level of expertise unlike any other in residential sales. Among Keller Williams' more than 150,000 agents nationwide, Stephanie has unfailingly been named and recognized for being a top contender. She is one of the most consistent agents. In a good market or bad, her track record is unwavering. Throughout her career, Stephanie has sold over 6,000 homes, more than many other individual agents. Her experience is vast and she takes great pride in her knowledge and skill. Stephanie's repeatedly been ranked in the top 10 agents nationwide for both Keller Williams and her former brokerage, Coldwell Banker. For 2019, Stephanie was honored with being named the top individual agent in the nation by Keller Williams Realty International. Stephanie's been recognized by numerous media outlets, including the Wall Street Journal's Real Trends, where she has continuously been named top 100 agents in the nation out of all agents from all brokerage jizz for total sales volume. As a recognized real estate expert, Stephanie has spoken on both local and national panels, appeared on specialist programs, and interviewed by numerous media outlets for her perspective, including Los Angeles Magazine, San Fernando Valley Business Journal, and the National Association of Realtors, to name a few. Stephanie's clients find her extremely accessible, very caring, and with great attention to detail. She handles each property as if it was her own and takes tremendous pride in her craft. She regularly stays in communication with a valuable network of business and real estate managers, investors, and other leading brokers in the nation. In addition to her own experience, Stephanie comes with a network of top-notch professionals to streamline the entire process of getting a home sold. Her clients receive the full support of the Keller Williams organization, as well as an extensive and dedicated in-house staff, encompassing both marketing and listing experts, as well as title and escrow specialists. Stephanie has excelled and earned some of the highest awards available in the industry. She attributes her success to hard work, attention to detail, and providing her clients with an extraordinary real estate experience. Stephanie is an established high achiever who will guide you through a smooth transaction. Your satisfaction is her objective. I am so excited for today's episode. This is the first in a three-part series. Stay tuned, strap in, get ready because you're about to learn what it takes to become an icon in the industry. Well, uh, welcome everyone, and uh, thanks for joining us today. Today, I've got someone really special, um, Stephanie Vitaco, who is uh, known nationwide, literally uh, one of the top real estate people in, on the planet. And uh, so, Stephanie, thank you for joining me today and taking the time. I know you're busier in hell. Oh, my so the, pleasure. the fact that you came out was awesome, and I do appreciate it. But, you know, I, and I know you do a lot of stuff talking and so forth uh, with various people, uh, you know, in various media kinds of things. And we're going to try to talk about some different things today. Sure. So uh, we'll start with why would you wear a white suit on a show that's going to be on TV? I, I need to know that. Because you told me. To. Oh, I did not tell you that. But anyway, it's kind of a, a little joke we've had going here. But uh, so growing up, okay, I know I know a little bit. Dad's an engineer, I think, right? Yeah. Okay. Doctor of math. Doctor of math. Retired now, but yes. Do you have that? Are math? you? Yeah. Are you a math person? No, I glued my algebra two book. I glued the pages <laughs> together at the end of the class. Really? So yeah. No, okay. Math I, I, is not and my so what was mom? Uh, my mom was a uh, part-time bank teller and a stay-at-home mom. Okay. She's a great mom. So that's she is a great it's mom. bank teller. That's where it, the bank stuff that came through. Maybe. Where, you, where you had to have a lot so, of money or something, right? I, you know what? I think that from my mm. dad I learned 
tremendous organization mm -hmm. and discipline and regiment and um, tracking of things because everything when you when you're raised by an engineer is right. You know, uh, my favorite one of my favorite things is when I was in high school and I'd say I was going to, you know, wanted to go out that night. He would refer to me in mathematical terms like there's a three sigma chance that that will happen, <laughs> which means less than like none. Right. Right. Nine, nine percent. So he <laughs> that's very funny. Me very analytical. Yeah. And very logical. So I did get that. Did he talk to you about what he say to you, you know, be disciplined or he did he just show discipline um, and structure? Uh, so my father told me one thing that he, my father was, um, um, my father is a very loving man and he's not a driver, but more followed by example. Um, he, but he told me when I was 10 years old, he said, I was kind of goofy, but I was 10 years old. I was worried about what I was going to do when I grow up. Right. Um, at that time, I didn't think there was anything unusual about that. Now I look back and it like, does seem weird. What yeah. the heck? You were 10 years old. Why would yeah. you think, go outside and play? Why are you worried about what you're going to do? When yeah. Why you were you up? worried about that? I don't know. I think it's just, you know, part your nature, right? How you, who you are. Yeah. So security was a security probably. issue. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, my family is mm -hmm. rich in love, but not in money. Right. So I wanted to be able to provide for myself to, to a level of, um, I wanted to be able to find a way that I could have financial success. Right. Stability, um, without being beholden to others. And so at 10 years old, you already saw yourself selling 400 houses a year? Or? Oh, I had no idea. It was kind of real estate. <laughs> yeah, I didn't no. know. I actually, I um, my mother, uh, is a big reader. And so she used to take us to the library mm -hmm. weekly. Yeah. And, um, so we were, we were brought up reading a lot. And I think that's important. But, um, and we just browse the bookshelves of the library. Still do that? Um, oh, I do would you have love time? to. Yeah. I would love to. Got but it. no. Okay. Um, I'm the person that starts mm -hmm. to read on my iPad at night and then it hits me in the face when I fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. But I know that feeling. I picked out a book um, when I was around 10 years old called What Color Is Your Parachute? Because it was about career choices. Oh. And um, again, at the time, I didn't think that was kind of weird. Now I think that's kind of weird. Yeah. But my father said to me, um, pick one thing and do it well. So my little 10-year-old brain started thinking, okay, I have to find one thing that I can I can do well. Right. So – in in that sense, my father, my father taught me by example, not well, that's, by heavy that's, hand or that's anything. That's really great advice, yeah. though. And it doesn't didn't feel like that coming out of his mouth. Probably he was just sort of like on autopilot. Well, you know, you know? no, he actually comes up with insightful things. And yeah. when he's there's, you know, how when someone tells you something and it it sticks in your brain and it makes you stop and you're not quite quite sure why, but you're like, ooh, that's important. Yeah. And then it comes back to you over Later. time. Yes. So my father yeah, has so some like of those some voice words. in the back of your head is going, you haven't been paying attention, but now's this moment. Do it for just a moment. That that Store. sentence, yeah, that, that one thing sentence, that someone yeah. says it's a zinger, and it like you're like yeah. this applies to me. This is important to me. Yeah, and I'm not quite sure why, but I got to This is and it sticks. 1974. I had been in real estate for three months, I think. Went to a um, motivational thing. Had Tom Hopkins, Jim Rohn, a couple other guys. Big, big guys and, yeah. you know, that motivational stuff. And Jim Rome had one statement, that one statement that you talked about. Mm -hmm. To this day, I remember it so vividly. What is it? And it was, it was, he goes, uh, people try so hard to be average. Oh. <laughs> and he says, and by definition, it shouldn't be hard. That's and good. It was great, you know, and, for the, and always I thought, yeah, why work to be average? That doesn't make any sense no. at all work to be really good at something. So I just thought that was, like I said, that's one thing that just it's been 50 years is stuck in my head. But I think it's hard mm -hmm. to get past the breakwater, right? Like to if the breakwater is average, mm -hmm. it's hard to even get that far without getting thrown back on the beach. But once you can figure out how to get past the breakwater, it, it's you're at a different pace, you're at a different cadence. Right. Do you feel that? Did you feel like in the very beginning you had a little struggle with that? A little struggle? Yeah. I felt like I was uh, in a riptide in getting body slammed on the really? on the beach, of course. So it wasn't just easy yeah. coming out of the gate. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you were young. You were you were what, twenty? I was twelve when I started. Twelve, yeah. You've been I, doing I it started, for twelve I, years. Exactly. I started twenty one. 
21. Yeah. Right. That's the same as me. So I was, I was young. My brain was young. I didn't have any business experience. Right. I had no, I mean, it was just, I was greener than green. Okay. So, so dad, dad got you just, just being around him sort of in a osmosis learning experience here. My parents here. instilled in me a, a work ethic, mm -hmm. an ethic of discipline, um, and, uh, an ethic. If you do good for others, good will come back to right. you. So just basic, um, principles right but just work by hard by example right show up show up put your best foot forward um you know work hard keep everything clean and did you do that at school yeah were you a good student i was a, i was a pretty good student yeah it wasn't straight a's right but i i good. got good high b's low a's but I had, I had to work to get the a's like that like you know there was gg i'll never forget gg who would just barely mm -hmm. show up and she was a partier and the girl was valedictorian. I mean, right. she just had that brain where she could like take the algebra two book, put it up to her head and translate. Yeah, right. Where I had to sit at the kitchen table Read with it. my father and pull my hair out over it. So I'd get there, but it was work for me. I was like that too, I think. It was, you know, just reasonably smart, but I had to work. Had, to get the high grades, I right? had to work to get the high me grades, too. yeah. Didn't have to work hard to get the bad grades. I did that too, <laughs> <laughs> some of that. Okay, so so they were academics, really. I mean, your parents were academics. My dad, my dad, academic. dad particularly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all right, so then you you get through that, you get through high school. Your your dad's showing you a little discipline. You're feeling that now, but you got out of high school. Discipline, not not a disciplinarian as a parent, right? Like a heavy hand. No, no, but, but structure, extreme structure. structure. He's an engineer. He's a like, math. Yeah. Everything is lined up right. perfectly, and it makes sense. And it's logical. Everything's logical. Yeah, very, very. Everything's, yeah, one thing leads to the next, and yeah, and extreme logic. Right. So, so you 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 picked up some of that. Oh yeah, a lot. Although of you it. were yeah a lot. A of lot it. of it. Okay. Absolutely. I'm very logical, very analytical. You are logical. Very systematized. Yeah, I see. Your, your brain works very one, two, three. Mm -hmm. I see it all the time when you know, you know I don't I'm not gonna lie Stephanie and I have known each other for a long time and and we're kind of neighbors except for that hers is a much more expensive neighborhood than mine not so at all. <laughs> so so okay so now you 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 get out of high school and then you got into modeling for a short period of time for a short I period of time in high school and did it for did a, a couple model. three years okay three years? Four years? I don't know, something like right. that. Okay, and you didn't want to do that anymore. Well, uh, it didn't want me. It didn't want you. <laughs> you know, the thing is, is that you... Me too, by the way. I, I, God, we, our, we, we parallel a lot. You I know? did fine for the market I was in, but, you know, it's great when you're 16 to 20-ish. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then there's, of course, those few that go on to do tremendously right. well. I wasn't tall enough. I wasn't pretty enough. I wasn't good enough, mm. whatever. I did great in that space, but again, mm. I wanted control. Right. And I remember I was working over overseas and um uh one of my they, they would put us in like we would live in uh, an apartment with three or four girls and right. then we'd go and work and one of the girls came home and um she was packing her bags and i said why are you going home she goes i'm too old i'm too old i'm washed up she was 23 and wow. i remember i was 20 and i remember thinking oh my god i'm gonna be old at 23 i gotta get out of this before this kicks me out because there's a whole bunch of working models, and then there's that few that are the elite class. Super, I was yeah. just, you know, I, I was working. I was making a good living at that age, yeah. but I did not want to be 23 years old and them kicking and me kick out. You out right. So I thought I need to an find old lady something. on your an own. Old lady yeah. at 23. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's mm. ridiculous. Yeah. So I thought um, I. It was a fantastic way to see the world and to get a nest egg to start to to start saving money because right. I was able to save money from the work that I did. Right. But um, it was a phenomenal way to get an education of living in other countries right. as a very young person on your own and being submerged into their culture. But I wanted to get out before it kicked me out. And sure. I, wanted con I wanted to find something that I had control over my financial... Your destiny, yeah, in exactly. effect. So were you feeling with the modeling that you were... You were just sort of like um, the controlled person. You were oh, totally. out of control. Totally, totally. So like, yeah. I, there was this job that I was up for, and it was <clears> in Guam. And I've always wanted to go to Guam because it's amazing islands. And it was a big group of girls, and it came down to two of us. And it was me and the blonde girl. And the blonde girl always gets it, by the way. And I was it's like, the way it should be. <laughs> <don't you think? laughs> hey, it comes in a bottle. Um, 
but mm. the blonde girl got it. And yeah. I was I was so discouraged because I just, more than anything, I wanted to go to Guam. It was a week in Guam. I was 17 or 18. Right. So, um, so you know, you don't have control. They want the blonde. They get the blonde. Right. So yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, and, and I guess you got to get comfortable with that idea. Oh, yeah, totally. You know? I mean, I got, I got plenty on my Different own. Different than a listing order. appointment. Um, well, still, yeah. it, it is uh, – yes, it is because I can't control – I can't change this, yeah, right. but I can um, master my skills at business, at real estate, at presentation with people, at um, learning how to provide a service and doing the. I can control that, right? Because that's up to me. Right. It's not if my hair is too long, too short, if I'm too tall, too skinny, too fat, yeah. whatever. I think that was one of the great things about real estate. I felt very much the same kind of thing. Where once I got into it, I started realizing that. Wow, it's sort of like unlimited, right? It like is. I can sort of now it's up to me. It is. And and with all the agents throughout the years, all of those that didn't make it, I don't think they ever connected with the power of me. You know, there's a, not me personally, but the power of yourself. The yeah. power of saying, "Wow, this is this is such an opportunity." Um, if I can master it, I don't think you know? it's for everybody, though. It so is. I don't think it's a matter of you know. <clears throat> It's, it's just not for everyone. And what right. it takes to get past the breakwater is right. huge, as it is, I think, in anything that's worth a, 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 a high level of success. Right. You know? But um, I don't think that it's – I don't think it's for everybody. So you came back from Guam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you never got to go to Guam. That's right. I didn't right. get the job. They picked that's the right. blonde. That's right. That's right. So you so came back from Japan. Japan. <laughs> you came Italy, back from Japan. Yeah. Came back from traveling. And, and then you said, okay, now i got to get my act together. I said, was it like um, that sense of urgency? So no, I was actually scheduled to go on a uh, another trip to Australia to work there mm -hmm. in their market, and um, I decided, you know, I'm going to get my real estate license because now I'm almost 21 and I see 23 coming up, right? Right. That's <laughs> like this, right. Just the getting old. Death. Yeah. Getting old. And I thought, you know, um, I'm going to get my real estate license because um, it interested me. And of all the that was books, just it. Well, of all the books that I had been reading yeah. since I was ten, <laughs> right? Um, any of the the business oriented books that I read uh, about people who who came from you know no be, you know just humble beginnings, no money, sure. no family money. Right. Um, the wealth was always real estate related. So right. I thought, okay, um, I will get my real estate license, and I'll have that. So and there wasn't a person. There wasn't like. Um... You, know, you knew somebody in real estate or any of that stuff. I didn't know anybody in real estate. Right. But there were two people that worked the neighborhood that I grew up in. Right. And I saw they were doing very well. Right. And one of them was actually very similar to my age. And he was making a lot of money. And so I had a falling out with my agency. And I decided, that's it. I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. I don't have control. Right. And I want control. And I want to do something bigger and better. And this isn't going to be it for me. Right. So I thought, I'm just going to jump in. So right. I got my real estate license uh, at 21 and it's just like, jumped Kind of like college athletes who go, I was really good at this, but I, I'm just, I don't have what it takes to get to the next level. Yeah. And to make that decision to just cut it off, just like, okay, I'm not going anywhere. Was that, was that kind of hard? I mean, no. did you love it that much? No, you were no, ready. Okay. No, 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 because I couldn't – I was hitting this this level. You felt, I couldn't yeah. get to that level. Right. And I couldn't get to that level unless you could like – You couldn't work harder. Extension yeah, put, exactly. Like, give me three more inches. So right. It wasn't, I wasn't going to be able to compete. Right. So I was out. Right. So I just – and I wanted – it was very important to me to find something that I could create financial stability for myself. Right. That was a big thing for you. Yeah. Big thing. Okay. So now you decide real estate's it. And you go work at a company, local company. Yep. And um, and then you walk in the first day, and what was the feeling? So they assigned me a mentor. I mean, I was so green. I didn't know. I had no conception of what to expect. What, right. Not, nothing. Zero. Like a blank slate. No formal training program with that company either. No. Yeah, it wasn't like go go two weeks, you know. No. We, we had a three week, four week, eight hour day training program that people went through. No, uh uh, nothing. Yeah, they just tossed you. So they whoop, tossed me in and they said, oh, and that guy's going to be your mentor. I said, okay, great. It was a husband and wife team. Yeah. And you know them. I think so. <laughs> I and, think so. And um, uh, first weekend, they said, we're leaving for Hawaii for a month vacation. And I was like, 
okay, what do I do now? <laughs> so there were four guys that sat at the back of the office right? and they did really well. And so I had a lot of questions. I'm a very inquisitive person by nature. right? And if I want to know something, I will ask question after question after question until you tell me to stop. right? And so I went to these four guys who all sat in the same quadrant. And I said, listen, I have some questions. These, my mentors are out of town. Do you mind if I ask you? Right. They were like, oh, sure, ask us, right? What are they going to say? No, don't ask us. Right. But they had no idea that, that you I wouldn't was going to be like on them, mm. right? So literally, it would get to the point where I would walk over to them and they'd all pick up their phone. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, there was no email where I could email them. It was right. I had to go ask. Right. So, um, uh, but they were very helpful. And I just I just looked everywhere I could. And if, if I asked that person and they wouldn't help me, I'd go to the next person. I'd go to the next person right. until I figured until I figured it out. So, so what, what did you figure out? For, oh, go ahead. So there was one story where there was a gentleman who um, he did very well. And uh, he was a Friday evening. And I forget why, but he needed a ride to LAX. Mm -hmm. And he was asking everybody in the office. Everybody had plans. And I said, I'll, I'll take you to LAX. But I want you to take an hour with me and show me what you do on your listing presentation. He said, deal, done. And he had a master listing presentation. And so I really learned a lot from him. Yeah. And it was simply a barter, right? I'll give yeah. you a ride. Right. I'll be your Uber. There was right. no Uber. <laughs> and right. just, just spend time with me and show me, like, how the heck to drive this car. Right. And uh, and he did. Were you around? Was Dick Farrell still around when you I were here? Well, Dick Farrell was that guy for me. Okay. He was that guy for me. And it was what like, was he, with? he was worked it? at Halleck. Halleck was, was yeah, he was yeah. before your time. Yeah. But they were the, they were the company in those days. I mean, they were one of those, just single office, wow. um, on Reseda Boulevard where the, the, uh, CSUN, that English Tudor building where CSUN oh, credit sure. unions at, yeah, that yeah, was, yeah. that was Halleck. And in 75, you could walk in their lobby. There would be four or $500,000 in antiques in the place. Oh, wow. It was outrageous. And um, so anyway, uh, there was a fellow named Dick Farrell, and Dick Farrell was a farmer. And uh, the very first day I went out with, with uh, someone that you know, the two of us started together. I knocked one side of the street, he knocked the other, and we got to the end of the street and go, who the hell's Dick Farrell? <laughs> because everybody at every house, uh, well, we know Dick Farrell, we know Dick Farrell, we know Dick Farrell. It's like, oh, that's crazy. So I called him. And said, hey. What company was he with? He was with Halleck. Oh, he was with Halleck. He, I, was, I was with Forrest Olson at okay. the time. And so I call him up and I go, you, you know, you don't know me, but I'm starting to get to know you. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, he says, oh, yeah, great. So he was, I was 21. He was probably you know, 33, 30. So he was young in the business too. Even when you started, you were young. I was. You know, and so in those days, it was even even worse. So he took kind of the same thing, took me under his arm and, and, uh, Became a lifelong friend. Did it was you great. Move over to Halleck? no, no. I stayed there, and and uh, you know he eventually moved uh, up to Arrowhead, but uh, and then had phenomenal success up there. So do you keep in touch with him today? Well, unfortunately, he passed away. Oh, but I did up until then. Yes, I did until then. But a great, a great, great guy, and uh, so you know, and and I see that with people today, where they they especially today, I don't know, younger people today, they they just they're they're. I don't see the same kind of curiosity of people getting the business today. It seems like they come in and they just think they should know it, boom, 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 and kind of you see a lot fizzle out because they don't want to humble up. They don't want to um, ask those questions. I think it, it was seems the like. same. I think it's always the same. You I do? just think there's a small percentage that are willing to get past just the water. Just a few water. like you that would go yeah. through it. I don't, yeah. think it's, I don't think it's Any different? the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, really? the people of 2000. No? I, think it's, I think it's most – People work hard to be average. Yeah, right. <laughs> however that, however that saying, yeah. right? It's yeah. hard it, to get past that breakwater, man. It takes so much more effort. Right. And you have to, you have to be willing to to break suffer through. through it. Yeah, it's <laughs> like athletics or anything, I suppose. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so then you take this guy to the airport, and he tells you about his listing presentation, and then you come back, and you're starting to get a sense of where you want to go, or how you. you Not quite the so foundation. Easy. <laughs> kind of, well, yeah, so, so how to go from there? I mean. It's, it was learning the basics. Right. And it was... Basics are? The basics are. Uh, so um, I had a three-by-five card that one of the guys that sat in the 
bank gave me. And it right. said, do these things and like basically leave us alone, right? <laughs> One was cold call. <laughs> a three by five card. It was. I, I think I have it uh, somewhere yeah, too. Yeah. Um, Better well, than a three ring binder, I suppose. I huh? had those yeah. two. But yeah, yeah. just basic. Keep it simple. Yeah. Cold call. Um, take floor time, which you know. Nobody does no one today. Has floor time. Right. I was the fastest on floor time, and I was I, those phones would ring, and psh, I was right there. Right. Um, sit open houses. So you were and door knock. So you were you saw every call as being um, possible lead. Possible lead. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so most of them weren't. A lot of them weren't. Yeah. So how'd you handle that? Just you. You, you just. Another thing I noticed. Screen through. I used to spend. Gosh, I don't know, sixty plus thousand dollars a month on newspaper advertising, and I would see people answer the phones, and uh, without that attitude, it'd be like if they didn't almost if they didn't jump out of the phone and say, "Please sell me this house," there was a bad lead in their mind. So what I you know? would do uh, is it didn't matter what they were calling on, right? And even I would say, "Okay, I'm looking that up for you," and it didn't matter about that. But then as I was taking that time to look it up for them. Right. I'd say, tell me what you're looking for. How long have you been right. looking? Do you have an agent helping you? What price range are you looking in? Da, 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 da. Then I'd say, oh, okay, here it is. You know what? That one's no longer available. But with what you've just told me, you're looking for, may I help you? And they would say, no, my sister's an agent. No, I'd say, okay, good luck. Or you know what? Yeah, great. What are you doing Saturday? Let's go look. Right. Just so it, was keep, just, it just wasn't keep about what they were asking. Right. Because people don't know what they're asking for. They right. don't know what they want. Right. Yeah, that, that whole buyer is liar thing has always driven me crazy because of exactly that. It's like, well, you know, buyers just tell you what they think My they favorite want. story was I had these two doctors and they said, Stephanie, we have two criteria. This is all you have to do is just follow our two criteria and we'll work great together. We absolutely mm -hmm. must have a tennis court and don't show us a Mediterranean house. <laughs> Ten months every Saturday. They were in my car. Wow. After 10 months, I said, you know, I want you to just... Now, by this time, they were very comfortable with me. I had earned their trust. I mean, we were friends. Ten, uh, who, every weekend, 10 Too months. Much, yeah. yeah. Almost every weekend. So I said, I just want you to humor me, mm -hmm. and I want to show you one house. But I have to tell you, it doesn't have a tennis court. We don't want to see it. I said, just let me finish. <laughs> and it's a Mediterranean. Absolutely not, <laughs> Stephanie. No way. I said, just do it for me. Okay, we'll do it for you. They walked in, they looked at each other, they said, this is it. How really? did you know? I was like, well, it only took 10 months and I don't know, 100 yeah. houses. Feeling, so, yeah. Yeah, so sometimes yeah. They, they don't know what they want. They don't know. They think they want that, but right. then they see that and they're like, oh my God, that's perfect. So you have to- Get them in the feeling. You have to learn what they like and don't like and, and educate them. It's an, yeah. it's an education. It's not selling, it's educating and counseling. Right. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so you were taking floor time, you are doing cold calling. I was. Wow, okay. Yeah. And did you farm? I did. I didn't you did? like it. Door knocking? Yeah, it scared me. You I didn't like it. No. You didn't it like it. It works. It's very, it's, it's very. What effective. scared you about it? Um, growing up, my mother was the one who slammed the door on the guy's Oh, oh okay. I hate those. Hey, right. Bleep, bleep, salesperson. Right. That people, blah, blah, blah. They, you know. So I always had that. So you, so you, you did work expired too, right? No. No, no expired. No, for, you just cold call. Cold call. Um, floor time. Floor time. Right. Door knock. Right. Open houses. Okay, and door knocking was what? Um, uh, three days a week. So you 12. were farming. That was you oh were, yeah. Oh, you I were did. farming. You just didn't, didn't like it. I didn't okay. like it, but I yeah. did it. But everybody in your company farmed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I got the door slammed on my face so many times. Right. Don't ever come back here again. I'm really? Not selling. Oh, you'll have to carry me out. That's my favorite. One. I would have slammed you'll the door in your face. You'll have to carry me. Out. Some people did. My favorite was the gentleman <clears> who. Um, uh, yeah, I love that when you have to carry me out. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. okay, we could do that. I have a letter that I kept from, uh, I think probably the first four months. Uh, we delivered pumpkins one year. Of course. In my farm. And uh, it was the first time I had ever, first time anybody had ever done it as far as I'm, I know. You started the pumpkins? I started the pumpkins. Hey, right. okay. So, so uh, and then we, the company got to, I think we, d we delivered 100,000 pumpkins one year. Oh my God. Crazy numbers, yeah. What was the, re what was the ROI on that? Do you know? Oh, it's astounding! But yeah. you know, when you're farming, you can't. No. You you can't think about what came back from that one individual no, 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 effort. No, no, it's cumulative. It's a cumulative yeah. kind of a thing, yeah. So, but uh, I got a letter from someone. They sent me, and they said, you know, and it was. I still have it, as a matter of fact, and I I put it in farm classes that I teach or when I'm talking about it. And the letter says to the effect of, 
you know, uh, Roger, you know, just want to write you a letter. We came home, we saw the pumpkin on our doorstep and how wonderful it was and blah, blah, blah. However, we've just moved into the neighborhood and so we expect to be here for a long, long time. But should there ever be a time when we sell our house, uh, we will call you. Sure. So I'm thinking, the first thing I thought was, my goodness, they picked a realtor based on a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> That was the first thing so that hit my there's head. There's a way to make there's a business a, yeah. decision. Yeah, exactly. How much produce would you like? Exactly. That's right. How about bananas? Can we send you oranges? You know. So, uh, but but the story, the reason I tell the story all the time is because the guy got transferred about six months later. Yeah. And sure enough, that they called me up. I got the listing. With so. Um, no, it's effective. And also, mm. what I found was real effective with door knocking is. They'd say, we're never moving. I'd say, that's great. Just keep me in mind if you know of anybody who is. And so the area that I was assigned, because it was protected farm, right. didn't turn over. And that's why it was the only area open. And nobody took, yeah. And when they gave me the <sighs> farm, they're like, I said, well, how, do I have any choice? And they said, well, they had the map on the wall, this, you know, this big of the whole valley. And there's right. one area. And they, um, they said, well, you could go like outside the area. And I said, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And I didn't have the wherewithal to think, I'll just go to a different company that has an area open because I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. Right. So they said, well, there's that one area. And it had been open because a woman had it tied up who was like 102 and she was retiring and there was no business out of it. Right. So, but I said, well, how do I know if it's good? They said, oh, you have to analyze it. How do I analyze it? I don't know how to analyze it. So again, I just dumb. I just said, okay, I followed the rules, right? right? Door knock it, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 to 12, follow up. And I got a lot of, I didn't sell a lot of homes in there because it doesn't turn over. Right. Still to this day, it's not a high turnover farm. Um, but a lot of people referred me business. So I right. got business out of it. Because right. They're like, uh, one time I got a lead because I was um, door knocking in the rain. And the guy was so impressed, he called me. And like, I don't know, I don't even remember that, but he said to me, my sister's going to sell her house and you were door knocking in the rain. So I know you're willing to work. And right. I was like, Okay, probably. Well, that's yeah, so funny. It's so true. And and I was the same way. I, I would door knock in 110 degrees with suit, full suit. If it was Monday, Always. Wednesday, Friday, 10 to 12, I was there. It didn't matter what it yeah. was. It didn't matter the rain. But, so whatever. people people would say that's to the me, discipline. It was a, yeah, exactly. It was exactly that that steadiness that can sit. But but I would I would be just perspiring like a like yeah, just like in a, the summer like a dog. It'd be horrible. Yeah. But what I discovered was. Seen being miserable and looking miserable, <laughs> people became sympathetic and they, they would invite you in. You. They'd feel sorry for you. They'd invite you in, drinking water and so forth. And so it actually became, it was almost like intentional, purposeful at that point. You know, it's just to look miserable so you can it's get effective. invited. Yeah, there you go. They feel sorry for you. But people do see you working and so forth. Okay, so now, so what are you a year in the business at this point, or how'd you do your first year? So my first year. <clears throat> Um, so I, I had the farm, but they told me a farm is going to take time, right? Which I knew that because right. they need to get to know you. Yeah. Um, but they said, work with buyers. So I was putting buyers in my car and taking buyers everywhere. Um, and open houses, you said. And open houses, right. yes. So I'd get the buyers from yeah. open houses, um, at floor time. Right. Um, and uh, the- Imagine being new today, no floor time, no open houses. Now you just reinvent yourself. Yeah. You know, how many times have you had to reinvent yourself yeah. as the as the business morphs and changes, yeah. right? Yeah. There's there's other ways to do it. It's just harder for a new person. I don't know that it's harder. Really? I think it's just different. I think there's other areas that are much easier now, like these young people who, it's interesting. I saw some guy and he has like, I don't know, 20,000 Instagram followers, but he doesn't sell any houses. But right. like he just does these videos and post stuff right. and all of that. Yeah. So maybe he gets busy. Maybe that's how he cultivates his business. Right. right? Maybe that's his. Someday it'll turn his, into something. Yeah. Maybe, or, yeah. Or at least he's getting business from his friends and his social right. sphere. Right. Cause our, how, how I was always trained to uh, connect with my sphere in the stages first, whatever, until the internet, t till what did it come about? A uh, couple of 2000, 2000 yeah. but really something, yeah. social media didn't really no. until 2008, nine yeah. ish. Yeah. Probably didn't really take hold 10, 11, right. 12. Um, yeah, Facebook was, let's see, MySpace was just fading out in about 07. Yeah, and people weren't. It was Facebook like, was yeah. coming in, MySpace was going out kind of thing, yeah. But, but yeah. the world wasn't on it yet. No. It was just college kids, mostly, yeah. right? And yeah. then it started to explode. Yeah. Um, but uh, the four guys in the back, so there was a board, a whiteboard in the back of the right. office. And it would say, every time they sold a house, they put their name up there, right? And I thought, oh, I have to get my name up there. 
So I went back there. So it was the office board. Yeah, the office board. Okay, I got it. Yeah. So I go look at it and I'm like, okay, they're selling four or five houses a month. I guess that's what I have to do. So again, I had no preconceived notion of what was good. What, yeah, and then what it was all about. Right. So all of a sudden, I just started, I was taking these buyers out and working these buyers like, you know, tell me what you want. I'll find it for you. And I would. And I'd work it hard. Right. And by, I think my, I don't remember if I was five or six months in and I sold like four houses in a month and they were all shocked. In and one I, month. Yeah. Wow. Because, and they were all shocked and I couldn't understand why they were shocked. I'm like, well, that's what everybody's doing. So isn't that what I'm supposed to do? Like right. I had no outside reference to, right. you can't do that. Right. Um, you know, so in fact, my father did say something to me when I first started selling. I said, dad, I sold a house this week. Um, so I moved back home at 21 so I could save, save money. Right. And cause mm -hmm. I didn't know they said plan on the first year making no money and it's going to be your education. So I was like, okay, I got to set a plan, hunker down, cut my expenses and just put all my money into creating this business. Right. So, um, and my parents were kind to let me move back home. Sure. So, um, my, I, I remember I went home and I said, dad, I sold a house this weekend. I think I'm going to sell another one this weekend. I could feel like I was, I found them a house and they were liking it. Right. And he said, don't get your hopes up. Just don't, you know, don't, you probably can't. Don't the engineer. Yes. The engineer conservative. came out. And I was right. so angry at him. I was like, I'm doing this just like, and from then on, I didn't tell him anything. We hope you enjoyed this first part of a three part series with Stephanie Vitaco. Stay tuned for part two coming out soon. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Ambitious Broker Podcast, where elite real estate professionals share their secrets to success, discuss topics impacting their industry, and gain professional development insights. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please rate it and leave a review.